Okay, folks, back at it here now. We got, uh, this is not the time to cheap out on your scotch Brite for removing this stuff, so use new stuff. Don't use, use, you don't listen to me. It's a prevention's worth a pound of cure, or whatever they say. I didn't really even want to film this because I was like, you know, this is probably boring to watch, but what do I know? People like watching stuff. Maybe this is something people would want to watch. All right, let me bring it in closer, kind of see what's going on. Let's take a dirty rag first. Now we're getting somewhere. See the uh, little bit still there to go. And quite a bit there. This was a really rusty old girl. But uh, for a junkyard axle, basically, can't, can't complain. And a tip, when you cut your brackets off, just leave the hump. Why cut too deep? You know, who cares there's a little hump on there, right? Oh man, we gotta make this quick. There's a good song on and I wanna turn it back up. So I wouldn't recommend the average Joe do this, but you can see I scrubbed pretty good, did it get it all, so I'm gonna start here in the real bad spot. Just like that. You can see there's still a little bit of pitting, but hey, I mean what we did is way better than just scratch break. And a whole lot faster so now we're gonna clean it out some more and uh, spray it out real good with brake clean on the inside be very cautious obviously out here and then uh, we'll be back all right let's pull the sleeve all the way out Some guys would probably say, don't take that out, don't mess with it, he's got to be the perfect, you're going to be moving it a couple turns, you'll never, that side, the distance is what matters, this you just bring it into where it needs to be, that's already set over there with the shim, that goes there. Alright, so we got this box of rags here, I'm just going to clean this, wipe it down. If you were just doing a quick gear swap, you wouldn't have to do all of this, right? But this is all different, so. I'm gonna clean these up some more. And we're still gonna clean it out. And spray it out one last time after we get the races for the pinion out. Don't cheap out on this. You'll thank yourself when it goes together nice and smooth and the adjuster spins like it should. The nut, or whatever you want to call her, the diff clampy dealy screwy holy thing. So now I'm going to get some air off camera so you don't have to listen to that. And then clean these up just a touch more. I'll be back. It's going to get cloudy. I used the air, blew it all out, cleaned this up real well with Scotch Bright. I didn't use any uh, wire wheel or anything like that because I'd rather not damage this. I'd rather damage what I'm cleaning it with. So what we're going to do is we're going to Cut a real small hole in the tip of this grease. Gear oil, whatever you want to call it. We're gonna put a little on the threads before we put it in. Don't cross thread or whatever you do, don't you know? I kid you not. You clean it out properly. And it goes in just fine. But before we get too far in there, let's bring it back out a little bit. Spill oil everywhere. A 
more is better, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna just spin this all the way in and then go back through, clean everything up and pound out the races and we'll get back at it. Man, this wind is bad today. Just gotta deal with what we got here. So some would use a brass punch, but I got, I'm not worried about it because I'm gonna be hitting steel on steel I don't care about. So I'm gonna use a long, whatever we got here. And then uh, we get a hammer. Always forget something. built the stand that's got it a little too high right now. I hope he cuts it and lowers it soon. This is just, he's not that tall of a guy. Nice if I had like an adjustable. Oh, she's rolling away. Oh, stop. I'm gonna have to put an old clamp on here. I'll have this and I'll be right back. Don't you worry about that paint. We'll repaint it. We gotta put brackets and you don't worry. It's gonna stop already. All right, here we go. Let's try this bigger piece of steel. I don't know. Bigger's not always better, they say. Uh, maybe. Oh, oh. Yeah. Bigger is not always better. That's how you use the tool, yeah? Take you in here real quick. So we got this side nice and clean. This side needs a little bit more, just a little bit more. Now this is all dirty. That's why I wasn't too worried about doing this yet. But now, as you can as you can see, as you can kind of see, it's a little goopy and gunky and no damage. That's what you want. But we'll clean this all out real well and get our pinion in there. We're good with there. Oh, yeah. But yeah, don't forget your cap surfaces also. Yep. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm like you guys. I wanna hurry up and go slap that baby in there too. But slow down, double check, think before you do any more. Clean everything up real good, oil everything. And I'll just even have lunch. I think that's what I'm gonna go do right now. So we'll be back at this in a little bit. Gotta, I think I might clean this up a little bit more. But you can see where the wheel, when I clean these up with the wheel, I got a little bit of, well, I still got a clean in there, final clean too. But anyway, man, look at, look at that. That was turned out nice. I even went around this edge a little bit more. Just a little touch up. Not bad for an old junkyard axle. Even in there ain't too bad. Man, quick work of it. So now just clean it up. I'm gonna scrub in there first and then hit some air. There we go. But uh, again, one step closer. Still gotta spray it out, but. Bling, bling, yo. But we got a little bit of ding, ding, yo. It's not real bad. And that is from this thing. Yo. 
Those corners were a little rough for whacking it in there, you know, but it's really not too bad. So I'm going to clean that up, flip it over, clean up the other side, and then uh, make sure the burrs are out. One final clean and then assembly. Now make sure to downshift too. Don't you know? And that why it's spinning. I'm trying to do it one handed. Sheesh. So we're going to right around on the inside there and be back with you. Maybe. I don't know. Might not even be able to get this down in there. So probably fortunately I couldn't fit it down in there to use it. So we're going to have to have a different method. So that's probably a good thing. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, man, I would have had this job done by now, and you're right. You're right. You would have had it done before me. But I want to make sure I do it right. So that's why I take my time, and you should too. So we got a little stone. We're going to just get in there and clean it up, and then we'll be back. I kid you not, that took no time. But you can still see there's a burr. Right there, that shiny little folded over, right there. But that is what you do not want to leave. It's not very big, but you know, let's just get it out of there, right? Okay, now you see that? No, you don't. You don't see nothing because that's cleaned up nice. So we will get to installing. No, oh, just kidding. I forgot. Okay, yeah, I forgot. We still got to clean up, obviously, this side too. So I'm going to probably run a wire wheel on the inside in here. And uh, I'm probably even going to take this paint right off, right down to bare metal. Because uh, we'll be putting this pinion seal and bearing and race and everything in here shortly. So better get after it and clean this up. Hurry up! I know, right? I want to just rush it, but see all this little bits of rust? We're going to have to use this little chisel, a little hand. I tried to use my air needler kind of deal, but I can't really control that that well in here. But you know, you get what you get with junkyard axle, right? So just clean that up the best you can. And then when you put the seal in, just use a little bit of the silicone. That could be part of the seal and not the actual housing, um, but that's the worst of it on that side. So we'll clean it up and it'll be fine. But you know, anything, you know the old saying, what's, what's the old saying? Anything we're doing is worth doing right, right? Sure enough, that side wasn't as uh, the only, the worst side, but yeah, it was, we're still gonna sand it up. You can see we got a lot of that rust out. And there's a couple little dings. Like I said, I had that chisel going right in there, a couple spots, but you know, can't see it because of the lighting. But I need to spin the axle around so I can see. But there's still a bunch more on this side, so a little more work. This side we gotta clean up now. And all I did was just go real slow. You can use this side. That worked pretty good. You'd think this would be the better side, but I seem to have good luck with, with that. But just real slowly. And then we'll be back. So this battery is just not charging. I need to plug it in right, I guess. I don't know. So we just ran it around there. Cleaned up pretty nice. I haven't yet blew it out and used the little brake clean. But uh, I'm going to spray the brake clean on the rag, not on our paint. Man, that song was terrible. So, great time to have it nice and clean. That down there is a little casting. I'm not worried about chipping that off because that's not going to hinder anything. Like the oil, just to. Well, it, it's fine. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna flip it over. 
make sure the inside's clean. Probably flip it back over and make sure for sure it's just, oop, up here. Make sure this is clean also. And then uh, we'll start putting some races in. Okay, we're running out of light here, but we're getting there. Everything is nice. Alright, so we're gonna start popping in some races. Good morning. Back at it. Got a race is about ready to go in. Everything's cleaned up. I'm putting in my pinion bearing. I just put left the bag on it just to keep it clean. Got our shim in there. I got an old race pushing against the inner cage. Um, probably a million ways to do it, but uh, this is the way I do it. Almost there. Let's press it, shake it. Crunching. Okay, the noise was just this race cracking. I did leave the plastic bag on there. You can see I got a tiny little piece in there. But the bearing is nice. And uh Everything looks pretty sweet. So, one step closer. So we got our shim, our bearing, our races. We'll just tap, tap, tap them in. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Saved myself some video editing and noise. I shot a little bit of that gear lube on there. And, uh... I'm not going to put the seal in just yet, or the crush washer, but uh, I got the bearing, the other race, and uh, we went with a brand new yoke, so we'll get after it. Alright, here we go. So we got our pinion in, no shim, or uh, no seal, and no crush sleeve, so now let's get the carrier in here. Uh, we gotta make sure we get it all clean too, right? We just did our first install here. And um, just to check the pattern, but she's, she's kind of binding. And my guess is she's too deep. Because, uh, just, let me see where I can get back to. So you can see a little bit of marking in between the teeth way deep. So my guess is, and you can see it's way in there. Not a bad pattern, but just too deep. So now I get to pull her all apart. Look what our brake clean did. Pull her all apart, take the pinion out, take the shim out. Probably gonna just run it without the shim. But we'll see. So we got our old shim here. Turned out to be 35 thou. So I wanted to still put something in there. So we got an 18 in there now. We're going to reinstall this bearing and try it again. All right. So I checked the pattern again. I'm glad I didn't totally remove the shim. But you can see. Yeah, we still got to come bring the pinion in. We're not engaging far enough. Not bad, but I'd like to see a little more tooth to tooth action. So I'm not going to go 35. I'm not going to go 18. I'm going to go 30. 28, 30. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So back apart we go. Okay. Fourth time is a charm, I guess. So we went from a stock 35 thou to an 18. 
18 was too loose to a 25 too tight now we're at 20 if this ain't good then I'm just gonna send it I don't know <laughs> okay fourth time's a charm our pattern is looking pretty sweet and we're gonna run it she spins nice and free <coughs> Uh, yeah, I got to torque everything and make sure I put my retainers in and all that fancy stuff, but we're getting there. Alright, so our backlash is 5 to 8, and we're right at 5. So, we're looking pretty good. So, as it wears, it'll have more backlash. So for now, you know, if 5 is on the tighter side, I'd rather have that because as it wears, it'll be looser, but we are looking pretty sweet. Okay. So now we got our carrier out. What? You got it back out? You had it all the... Well, we got to set a pre pinion preload. So now we'll be able to... Without that impeding trying to do. So I'm gonna get this going and I'll be back. Pinions out. Make sure you leave your bearing in there. We're gonna install this seal, put a little bit of, clean it up, put a little silicone on there, put the seal in, and put our crush sleeve in. I'm actually gonna do that at meow before I forget. Oh, there it is. And then we'll be back. Okay, everything's all torquelated, retainer thingy is in there. Pattern's looking sweet, sweet, sweet. So, here's our bearings and seals. Spent a little extra getting the nationals. They're a little better. And I cleaned up where they go on each side. So let's get to putting them in. Got our axle bearing pounded in there. Got a little bit of white lithium on the inside of the seal, the outer edge of it, keep it from drying out. And then some silicone. And then on here. Just gonna give you a little tap, tap, tap room. So now we need the uh, caliper mounts. But these stuff. See where the old dust shield was. We need to get a new dust shield, and I do believe these go through the dust shield in this bracket. So we've had them soaking. I'm running these in. This is a good time for power tools. I'm gonna run this down a little farther. Give them a couple of swack, 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 up here, and uh, hopefully we can drag these out. If not, we'll have to put some heat on. We got our pattern, coast side, nice and centered. Drive side, nice and centered. We uh, got everything cleaned up, painted, new dust shields on them. Got the axles, seals kind of greased, and another little tip paint, paint those seals too, right? Because that seal will just rust and then it won't be no good. Got the yoke all painted and cleaned. And Got this end done, cleaned, painted. I left these old springs on just to keep everything together for the emergency brake. Uh, but we're getting there. So what I ended up doing is I pulled the bolt out, turned it up to about 110 to about here, pushed it out this way just far enough where I could get in here and you can't turn it, right? Because it'll hit. So you can only turn it so far. You have to leave it kind of like yo-yo, right there. But you can see where the axle is, so you'll be able to slide it out. Just so you can see here. Slide that out. Push in your axle a little bit. Put your clip on. Keep your hand on it. And push it back in, or else you'll drop it. Fortunately, this time, I didn't, didn't drop anything. So, same thing on the other side. 
push it in, get your clip on, hold it, push it back, then you can run your pin back in, and then torque your, this bolt, so important. If you're really that worried, put some Loctite on it, but I put a bunch of Ooga Doogas and then took a hammer and just to make sure. Torque, 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 everything's torqued, pattern's good, new bearings, everything spins nice and free. So all we got left is to add our sauce and um, clean up our gasket surface, wipe that down, and put some silicone, bolt her down. Time for a drink. Make sure you use your uh, additive which we got in there. I already got one in there as well. Just pour it right over everything nice and slow like. Make sure you get your bearing caps. So I'm gonna put, it says two and three quarters for this 14 volt. So I'm gonna just put two and uh, the additive in there. And then we'll check it later because it's a whole lot easier to do it like this. Rat meow. Now that that's open, gear lube in it, all prepped. Gotta hurry up because we don't want stuff getting down in there. So you know me, we use our silicone. Spread it around nice and thin, both sides. And then I'm actually going to use the old bolts and lightly hand tighten them until it sets up. And then tomorrow I'm gonna take them out, paint the cover. Um, I should do it first, but I don't have the paint. And then I'm gonna put in the new bolts once I have it ready to be torqued. Okay, getting closer and closer on this Tahoe. Still gotta put in our new bolts after that sets up. We got our brackets cleaned up, ready to weld them on the tube. And I figured I'll uh, share a little tip here. I'm moving everything. Everything's changed and getting changed, and just like this. Over here, you can see the one I'm taking off. It's to change your pinion angle. Still zoom away and change your pinion angle. And uh, I don't want to build it with that in mind. So I'm going to just change the pinion angle wherever it needs to be and weld it and have a stock per se location. So we're going to get these out. I just got them clamped on each side. Just hit the, pull the bolt out and then uh, put the bolt back in. Simple. Now this is a great example. Why you don't even want to run this? I mean, pretty sure this one's steel. I have other ones that are aluminum, and that's even sillier. But the, that bolt just digs right into that. So, you know, do you really want to? That's brand new. It ain't even been used yet. So, what do you think it's gonna do? So yeah, don't use these if you can. Just Cut the brackets, change the pinion angle, weld them back on. Update on this 14 bolt. I just did the nine and a half ring gear, changed it to four tens. Um, but as you can see, the vent tube is no longer there. And you need a vent tube. Oh, it's kind of windy here. Maybe you can hear this. pressure and if you don't let out pressure when it heats up it's just gonna blow out that way and blow out this way so check make sure you have the vent and it's clear or else you might think you have bad seals 
and you won't. And I imagine it's going to, the fluid won't last as long either, getting so hot. So do yourself a favor and make sure you got a vent on your action.